Hey everybody, welcome back to Monday Night Muscle. I'm here with Sugar Sean Ray, Hall of Famer, and a guy who should be in the Hall of Fame, of course. It is Super Trainer and my brother from Rochester, New York. Georgie, what's up, buddy? Bulletproof. What's up? What's up, you guys? <laughs> Long know. time. Long time, man. George? I hate this corona. <laughs> Bro, I've known George Farah, right? We train at the same gym, Samson's in Rochester, New York, so we go back... 30 years. Well, George, <laughs> no. what are you, 70 years old now? What are you doing up there? <laughs> so, yes, you know what? The good thing is, I'm only 50, but I don't look a day over 70. <laughs> no, no, not at all. But, uh, so, but George, you, you actually had a, a pretty good run, man. I mean, I remember when you were coming up uh, back in the day. I called you bulletproof because we'll get to that story in a minute. But, uh, man, you've had overcome a lot of obstacles, not only when you were competing, but even after competing. And yet, You've trained some of the world's best, including Mr. USA, uh, Kai Green, Dexter Jackson. You've been right there in the in the trenches with a lot of these guys. But we're going to start at the beginning, which Bob doesn't like to do because his memory is not <laughs> as good as mine. Uh, but you earned your pro card what year and what contest? National, 2000. 2000 Nationals, Bob. So I was almost uh, retired. I retired in 01. I think, Bob, you won the USA's what year? 2000. There you guys yeah, go. Yeah. Did you work with him when he turned pro, George? Ask him. <laughs> sure did. Yeah. I mean. Wow. That's how. That's how he became a pro. Finally. Oh, listen. No doubt about you it. You know, it, it was. It was a beautiful though. It was beautiful because me and Bob, when, you know, we were friends and stuff. And finally, you know, I I did like a junior or something just as a tryout. And Bob, he goes, "Holy crap, bro! You look amazing. How did you like the skin?" I is said, "Bob, we can do this with you." This is in the gym. Yes, yeah, in yeah. the gym. Okay. And and listen, bro, Bob did I think the national North American in the USA for thirteen years. Right. Remember, he was the first junior national overall winner in nineteen what eighty seven. Eighty seven. Yeah. Yeah. Eighty seven. Mm -hmm. And since then, he couldn't turn pro. I said, "Bob, I can guarantee you, bro, in a matter of year, you will turn pro." So anyway, we get like we get a little ready. We didn't have too much time. And uh, well, wait, wait a minute. Know, Let me interject. So we actually ahead. had we had less time than you thought, even if you remember. Yes, yes, yes. But, well, because you told me. Well, he told me. Oh, we have like fourteen weeks. I said it's okay. Then we can still have a little cheating or whatever. <laughs> and then he calls me. He goes, hey, you know, he goes, hey, bro, what's going on? I'm like, Bob. I'm looking at the calendar. Where are you? He goes, I'm Burger King or something. I said, drop that thing. We don't have time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had like it 11 was, weeks. Of time. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, knew it, I knew it took a long time for him to prepare. I used to get ready yes. like eight weeks. But nonetheless, 11 weeks to go for the show. You put your faith in. Yeah. What, what made you put your faith in George at that time? Because he turned pro in 2000. Well, people got to understand the context now, okay? Now, I, I know George. George is George from the gym, okay? Right. We all trained together, right? We had a great crew at Samson's Gym back then, a very hardcore uh, gym in the area, you know, and everybody who's anybody trained there, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is not George the guru, George the pro maker. George, the body this is the before body. all that stuff, yeah. right? This is just George again at the gym. Now, George is always very knowledgeable, and, uh, you know, we all competed, you know, in the same shows, in, in the Rochester shows, New York State, all those things. Yeah. Um, so me and George got together, like he said, and, and um, he's like, look, bro, I can help you um, you know, get that pro card. And I'm like, really? You know, and he's like, yeah, I mean, well, you get in great shape. I mean, he's, he's like, bro, I'm telling you, take it to the bank. I will get you in shape. You will win that show. And were you working with other clients at the time, George, or was this no. your first experience? Yes, well, that's how, that's how Bob saw me because I was helping a lot of people. I was just, you know, yeah. getting Local. out of nutrition and okay. doing some chemistry yeah. in school, you know, and that's how we hooked up because he saw the guys like, the Mark Natale, Tony, and all of them, they're looking like crazy shredded. Yeah. So I, that's how we started talking. But let Bob tell you. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. George worked with local. I mean, he didn't have any pros. It wasn't, like I say, it wasn't like what he is today, obviously, as everybody knows George. So long story short, uh, we're going to get ready uh, for a show, right, right. To, you know, to, to turn pro. Well, as it would be, enough time had lapsed that I wasn't qualified. Now, by the time we find this out, you know, because you had to qualify for the Nationals back Right, then. absolutely. Well, by the time we find this out, there's like two shows left on the, in the, before the, the Nationals. Right. Um, and we, <laughs> we're like, well, you know, we got to hit one of these things. So we pick a show in Texas, right? We go down to the uh, Lone Star uh, you know, competition in Texas. Lone Star, and yes. the enter there. And George's like, look, I'm going to bring you in. You're not going to be 100%, but I'm going to bring you in enough to qualify. And then we'll put all our cards into the... You know the the pro, the pro you know uh, qualifier. It's okay. So that's what we did. We went down there, 
George thought it was hilarious because I get out there and uh, people thought I was guest posing. Yeah, was this a prince? Well, what happened is, no, Bob, you got to tell him the story. So Bob walked on the stage and he gets, you can see him, he's all nervous because everybody stopped. Nobody's <laughs> clapping, nobody. And I, I looked at him, I'm like, you know, I was like this. And he thought, he's like, you know, he doesn't look good. He came down, he goes, Bro, what the hell's going on? I said, bro, they thought you were the guest poser. You're the <laughs> like, holy crap. Who's this is the Lone guy? Star, right? This, this is the Lone Star. Yeah, is, Prince, is Prince Harrison the, the uh, I think it was Prince remember, Harrison. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because remember, the guest poser at that show was Branch Warren. The Branch wasn't even a pro. Yeah. Wow. So <laughs> okay, here's a fob, yeah. six feet tall, freaking 250 <laughs> pounds shredded. Everybody's like, Holy crap, who's it? And then all of a sudden, when Bob started getting nervous, then they call him out, and then everybody starts streaming. Bob would tell you, he said, hey, bro, whatever your number, you know, like whatever was number 13 or whatever, yeah. he goes, just take your trophy home, man. We don't want to wait for tonight. <laughs> A man like against boys, now, huh, this is where it gets yeah, yeah. fun, okay? So this is all leading up to the USA and all that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Well, now, again, you, you got to think of the time frame here. We're talking about 1999, yeah. okay? So not everybody's on the computer, not everybody's, well, George's, of course, right? But he's into these chat rooms, yeah. right? Now, this is, again, before the days of the, you know, when the chat rooms kind of to come out, you know, where everybody was on them. Get big <laughs> So George's feet, I don't even have a computer at the time, right? Yeah. George gets into a fight online, right, with, uh, um, what's his name, Matt Duvall, Defendus. who was competing, and... And John Defendus. John Defendus, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Now, Defendus is kind of training Matt Duvall. He's overlooking his, his training. George is over, overlooking my training now. By this time, George has seen enough that he's like, bro, we're winning at USA. It's over. They're not even gonna be able to stand next to you. Trust me, right? We're done. Like, this is it, man. You're That's gonna, what I love about George, his confidence. Oh, well, In listen. everything you do, George, your confidence is what kills and, me. And, and I'm a believer at this point, right? Because <laughs> yeah. listen, this guy just brought me into Lone Star. I was kicking ass, okay. but now we're, we're going to now. The only reason I was, I was gonna be, uh, um, bigger for the USA as I was coming off of back surgery uh -huh. in 98. So I was not I was only, only able to get so much back in a year, but by the USA, I was, I'm going to be 100%, right? And uh, so funny thing is, is so George is printing these things out and bringing them to me every day or two or three, right? I get the, bro, look at this, look what at this. What is it, right? are they pictures? Are they no, no, diets? it's the printout of the, of the conversation going oh, on the, what forward. they're talking yeah, yeah, yeah. about. Right? And, and <laughs> George, he gets into it with these guys online, <laughs> and he's going, I'm t he's not going to be able to stand next to him, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. John, he, he goes, Bob will not be able to hold Matt Duvall's back. May, you know, may God bless yeah, the yeah. soul. <laughs> right. But I'm like, Late I said, I said, listen, how much you want to bet? I said, I don't know if you know anything about me, but I, I do have plenty of money. I said, so I'm willing to bet you. I'm talking to defendants and all these guys. <laughs> so anyway, make the story short. The, the best thing is, Bob, tell them about your weight. Oh, yeah. When, before we started, how much I told you you're going to wait and what happened? Well, so I'm like 250-something, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm in pretty good shape. And um, so we were kind of going back and forth on what do you think. I'm going to be in the super heavyweights, without question. Um, so I asked Jory, I said, so what do you think, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to weigh at the show? He's like, well, what do you How think? How long, though? Weigh? How long before? And, well, this is months, months before, right? And I go, I don't know, I'm in pretty good shape. I, I got to imagine I'd probably, I can't imagine I'd be under like 240-something, you know right. what I mean? And he's like, bro, I'm telling you right now, you're going to be 233. Okay. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> 233? I'm like, are you sure? Pretty specific. Well, ver not only very specific, but low. You know, like I'm yeah. thinking that I'm already in shape, you know. Mm -hmm. He's like, bro, I'm telling you, you're not even in shape yet. Trust me. Okay, all right. Trust I'll be damned. Don't we get to the weigh-in? What do I weigh in at? Two, 233. 233. That's why um, they call him the guru. But let me tell you something. Good thing he was a guru because mm -hmm. my metabolism was so fast at that point. Now, that, now George had me... I'm chronicling every. I got a whole book of weights and this and what, what, how much I would go to bed, how much I would weigh, how much I would weigh when I so, get up. Right? What I'm saying is, were you scientific, George, to the degree you were telling him what to eat, when to eat oh, it, yeah. how oh, much, yeah, yeah. all of the course, calories, all the fats, and you're oh, breaking Bob it down. Bob was flabbergasted. He couldn't believe like how much he was gonna weigh, he, like how he's gonna look. And you know, we gave him. You don't understand. Carbon up because of he's a bigger guy. Yeah. His metabolism. Get so fast, right? Yeah, it was crazy. And no plan, nothing. He'll tell you we were getting ready on basically nothing, man. He was like, I couldn't believe like how safe I approached things. What is it? Ten pounds of potato and how many rice? I mean, ask him. He oh, couldn't we, believe uh, he's eating all this. 
One, yeah, was, my metabolism is so crazy. I'm dropping 10 pounds overnight, every night. Mm -hmm. So I'd weigh in before I go to bed, I'd weigh in first thing in the morning. I'm 10 pounds lighter in the morning. And you're just sweating. I mean, you remember those days. Your metabolism is just yeah. kicking, right? Going to bathrooms. How much cardio crazy. did you have him doing, George? How much cardio per day? Actually, we stopped cardio, what, three weeks? Yeah, we had, weeks to, before? we had to stop it because yeah. I was getting a little too lean too quick. And he's like, well, yes. let's just back this off. You're good. Um, but then we had to start, he had to start reversing it because my metabolism was, anything I would consume was just gone. So, so while hey. this is happening, and mind you, this is pre-cell phone era. George, are you taking pictures of this guy because you're there in person? Are you documenting anything? This is an experiment. Oh, I mean, much you know, we, you know, I always like look at him under the same light, yeah. yeah, same place. You know what I mean? So I can make the adjustment. I write down stuff, yeah. see what's going on. You're not photographing. But then when, him. You know, the reason pictures. why, yeah, the reason why, Sean, we did take some pictures. The reason why I was doing this because I used to tell him, I said, Bob, even that I'm going to see you. I really want you, before you close your eyes, yeah. I want to know how much you weigh, and as soon as you wake up in the morning. And when I saw that, like, big gap starts, yeah. so that's when I started pounding the carb, adding good fat, because his metabolism were on fire. I mean, you have to see. Like, people will come and see him in the gym, but like, holy crap, what did you do to Bob? Now, I mean, they were accusing us of taking oh, so many things, and, and Bob <laughs> will tell you. Well, let's, let's use, you let's that. use was, some context, because... It sounds like he's a guinea pig in the beginning. He, he's coming to you <laughs> no, after. No, 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 no. Listen, I'm, I'm using the I word had guinea so pig. Many before. I'm using the word guinea pig in the most loving, caring way, George. I know <laughs> you, nice you, you pay attention to your athletes. Yeah. This is a guy we're experimenting with. He's dropping weight like crazy. You got him eating all these carbohydrates to balance everything out. Um, but you're not yet the guru, right? You're not. You don't even have your pro card yet. Right. You're just a guy that's like a middleweight in the gym. Right. Telling him how great he's going to be. Why is he? Why, where, what did you see? He's not Matt Mendenhall. He's not Roy Lillemeyer. I mean, what did you see that gave you this confidence that he's going to be the next national USA well, champion? You know, we, well, you know, you need to remember, Sean. You know, Bob, he's six feet tall. Yeah, so he's right? huge, yes. And he have a 30-inch waist, 30, 31-inch mm -hmm. waist. That's long gone, but go ahead. <laughs> with shoulders like this big. Mm -hmm. I mean, shoulders so wide. The ratio was amazing. The sweep was crazy. His calves, I mean, like out of this world. I mean, he's hitting those shots. I'm like, dude, I've been going to the USA, you know, for like four or five years before that. I was going to every USA, taking pictures because I wanted to compete it eventually. You know what I mean? But make the story short, when I'm looking at him, I'm like, there's no way somebody's going to be there's there's absolutely well, because i'm looking the lineup who's going to be there okay hold, hold on know, George, hold on I want, to stop, I want to stop you there because i want to take this commercial break and let you finish your story because there were people that could beat him i was one yeah. we were 19 years old <laughs> and i was 20 years old but we're going to talk about the old days when we come back after the first commercial break here at monday night muscle with the guru george farah All right, thanks for sticking with us here at Monday Night Muscle. I was just taking the air at a Bob's balloon yeah. as George Farah dialed him in for his USA overall victory, taking him back to his teenage years in 1984-85 in Detroit and Atlanta when I smacked him around and beat him up again over there. And You're lucky I didn't have George then, bro. And yeah, and then some, uh, some time later, George comes <laughs> into the scene and uh, you dialed him in with his 30-inch waist, which is long gone. And uh, so the guy gets his pro card, he wins the USA Championships. And he's everything that you told him he was going to be. And, of course, he went on to win the World Championships in New York later on after that. But you went on, George, after you created Bob and everything that he was. <laughs> you went on to work with a lot of distinguished, decorated athletes, including uh, the, the Enigma, Kai Green, uh, and Dexter the Blade, the Vampire Jackson. <laughs> right. You had a long history of working with guys that had some very good success. But along the way, you wound up in a couple of Mr. Olympias yourself. And I called yeah. you bulletproof because you took a couple of bullets along the way, had the surgery, yeah. recovered from the surgery, competed after that when everybody thought you shouldn't because there's no way you can come back. Um, tell us, take us back to the, those days when you were overcoming and battling those injuries. 
uh, to get back to the Olympia because well, you, helped, you helped these guys become champions and then you became one yourself. Well, you know, you know what it is. Believe it or not, man, things sometimes happen for a reason. You don't know what the reason, you know. Yeah. You, you just got to be thankful. You can't be like, why me, God? But, you know, we never know why right. those certain things happen. But I'm going to tell you what, with me getting shot and losing my kidney and not being able to eat a lot of protein, mm -hmm. believe it or not, it kind of like made me study more and research more that people didn't really need that much protein. Yeah. You know, and that's why, man, when I work with somebody, you know, I rely on a lot of complex carbohydrates, obviously not sugar and stuff. And in man, they just flourish, just like branch, like all these guys. I mean, Bob was telling me, bro, like only six ounces of protein. You know, I, you know, I'm a big guy. I said, Bob, trust me, man, you want to win. Mm -hmm. We don't care about how much you're eating now. We celebrate later. And sure enough, that's what I do because, you know, the, the, too much protein is very toxic. You yes, know what I mean? Right. You know, you, you gotta you gotta drink a lot of water to flush it and stuff. Mm -hmm. And and you know, I like it when a lot of people, you know, on other channels they try it like to attack me because I tell them, you know, not to eat too much protein. Pro Listen, man, let me explain something to you. You know, especially right now. I don't know much. I mean, Bob no, he used to think I'm the smartest guy back then, you know. But I'm going to tell you what, Sean, the more I study right now, you know, I just finished my doctorate in yeah. integrative medicine. Right. But the more you study, the more you find out that you don't know nothing. Yeah, right, you know what right. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I truly studying. believe. So, <laughs> no, but seriously, you know, Sean, like I really like I like when I meet somebody yeah. and I ask them something and they talk to me and they don't act like they know everything. OK, because. If there is somebody that knows everything, those are the people you got to stay away from yeah, because they're them. not willing to, you know, to learn or, you know what I'm saying? So that's why some of the people, believe it or not, I work with big names. I don't want to mention them, but I'm like, you know what? I'm all set, man, because you, you know it all, you know, yeah. you do it. I'm trying to keep you healthy here. Yeah. And this is basically why I finished my doctorate right now, because I want to pay it forward. Okay. You know, and Bob would tell you how healthy he was, his blood work. Everything will ask just perfect. And that's what I want, man. That's why I told Dexter, man, you're 50 some years old. You look amazing. Honestly, Dexter, you have perfect blood work, man. Let's call it. And you know what? We agree. Okay. Like, this is this is what I like. I like people become family. You know, like yesterday, you know, uh, Kai was talking to me. By the way, he looked freaking phenomenal. I know. What is the reason you for know? him? Why is he looking so phenomenal and he's not competing in any of these shows, I, I mean, what, can't what's the deal? tell you. <laughs> is it a secret? Is he coming out with a super? Yeah, you know what? Well, I think, I think, I think. You know, there is, there is, there's, you know, unfinished business on his mind. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and honestly, uh, you know, because you, as you know, Sean, you're very veteran, you and Bob, and you guys know if somebody stopped working out yeah. to make a comeback, it's not going to be good. True. And I think he's still thinking he wants to compete. So we don't know when. Him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's why, like, he keeps training like a bodybuilder, eating like a bodybuilder, you know, do his things, send me the picture. Yeah. And this, this is what makes him who he is. You know George, what, I mean? what, do you, what, what do you think about, let's not take Kai specifically, but uh, we've all been around the sport about the same length of time. None of us have ever really seen anybody make a comeback and look good. Not successfully. It just, yeah, we've seen almost no successful comebacks. Yeah. So a, a few with marginal. We saw Ferrigno at 40. Two. Coming back, and he's still a relatively young guy. After We're talking about guys like Kai Green now closer to 50, uh, Sean Roden, or these type of guys. Dexter just hung him up. Um, do you think a lot of these guys are, are better served not coming back? You see, the problem is how can you, like, even even with, with you know, somebody like Dexter, okay? So Dexter, you know, he got the corona. He wasn't feeling good. I couldn't go, obviously. I said, no way. Right. Right. Yeah. I told him two weeks before the show, I said, something's not right. Something's not clicking, you know, because mm -hmm. I know his body. And but but how can you tell a guy that he's still placing? He was fourth at the Olympia. How can I tell him not to do another? One? He was you know second at the Arnold. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Then he was second at the Arnold and arguably he could have won it. Yes. Too, as we all saw at night. So you can't tell him not to compete. Right. And I'm telling you guys, I will not my guys. If they don't look good, I'm gonna tell them, dude, don't don't bother, you know. But I, but honestly, if you're asking me about Kai, dude, when I just saw 
what I just saw, I can't even explain it to you. <laughs> he looks like, honest, honestly, he looks like he's, he's probably three weeks out yeah. from a show. And there's nothing it's coming crazy. up in the next three weeks on our calendar. And I mean, I'm talking everything, prostrated legs, big, I'm like, holy, I mean, and we're talking about 300 pounds. I'm let, five, eight. You let know me, what I'm let me ask you, so, George, I'm going to bring you current because I know uh, we, we, we're not we're kind of long on time, but what mistakes do you see these athletes today making that you didn't witness when you were coming up uh, in the game? It seemed like it was simpler times back then. Now it seems like every athlete has a trainer or a guru, um, and the bodybuilder themselves don't seem to know their body as well as they should because they're not really invested in it. Bob was smart enough to turn it over to you and create him into a champion because he couldn't do it on his own. Um, are you giving these guys enough rope to do their own thing, or are you telling them what they have to do and they follow your lead? John, the thing is with me is Bob will tell you, everybody I work with, you know, everybody I work with, they become coach. Because like a lot of, lot of the guys now, they ask me, I mean, my God, I have like oh, close to 300,000 followers on Instagram. I don't even go on Instagram. Uh -huh. And people say, man, if you go, you know, I'm like, I don't care about followers. Right. I want to create leaders, bro. I want to teach people to pay it forward. Mm -hmm. You know, like right now, if I show you how many texts, John, I'm getting from people, them just thanking me for saving their life from cancer. Yeah. This is, dude, this is better than anything because I want to teach everybody, man, how to do it. And in the back to your question is, Honestly, what people are doing wrong now, they're complicating things, man. Mm. Things should be so simple. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, now they all rely on so much drug and so much things. I'm like, dude, you don't need that stuff. You don't need it. You know, like, you just don't need that much. So you need to you just know, train harder? You, are you putting more emphasis on the training for these yes, people? Yes, yes. Listen, you know how some people, they used to tell you, well, 50% of it, if, you know, it's nutrition. I say 80, 90 percent nutrition, because mm. if you don't know what you're eating, I don't care how much you take stuff or what are you doing. That's why we see people. They look great in the gym. Then when you see them on the stage, they look horrible. You know what I'm saying? So you, you need, really need to have the science of the food. You know, it's, it's important. I mean, unfortunately, what happened to me first time getting shot, losing kidney taught me a lot. And now, you know, almost died from stage four cancer. For me to beat it was like, just, you know, I'm thankful. This well, for is, you to I'm be here right course. now, you've got to be pretty thankful. Exactly. Uh, what, how years, uh, how is years now cancer free. Cancer free from stage four. So yes. do you think you fought your way back because of the wisdom that you learned and, or the, or oh, the information you already listen, had? Listen, 100%, 100%. As a matter of fact, I'm doing a paper now for a doctorate, that's okay. a patient. Not only that, I'm going to tell you what's so, what, you know, what's so important. A lot of people don't know. If you right now, you just go Google, even that Google is not very accurate. But if you see some studies on people mass prayer, you know, people praying for you. I mean, there is actually study done, you know, in, in, the, in New York City on one of the biggest, you know, cancer, you know, institute. They show that they took names of the people. You know, name fifty percent of them. They have they have the same, you know, cancer. Okay. They took fifty percent of them and they made mosques. You know, people in mosques, people in churches, and people in temples pray for those without them knowing, without the doctor knowing. Mm -hmm. You know, those people that they got prayed on, they healed fifty percent faster. Wow, power and prayer. So I was lucky. So it's amazing, man. The power of you know, like anything you send out there, you either send. A negative vibe right. or you give people a positive vibe mm -hmm. so positive vibe help and honestly i i truly believe like because i'm internationally known everybody i mean from saudi arabia they told me to go to Mecca, and they, they they went to buddhism in china for me in india in in, in italy john mm -hmm. arico and all those yeah. guys italian friends they went to the vatican and I, I could feel it, man, that it really helped me. You know what I mean? That's good. It helped. And of course, my knowledge and, you know, having my wife being a medical director, all the doctors are friends of ours. So it really worked for me. But you know what's so cool, man? Like after five months, you know, they, first they give you 10, 15 percent chance to live. And I said, you know, what? I don't believe in chances. I think God have the, the final call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They said, so what do you mean? I said, you know, I want to help you guys. I want to help you with the food because I know I messed up for four or five years. 
being injured, have lead inside me, eating whatever, traveling, going with Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, to movies, this and that. So I was eating everything. I didn't care, you know, because I'm not competing. But I know how to reverse it, and it's been proven now. They put mice on sugar and bad stuff, and they see that the cancer cell went way up. Yeah. And then when they reverse it and get rid of it, it actually the disease reversed. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I did that, at the beginning, they laughed at me. But let me tell you something. After five months, you know, my wife, she goes, oh, my God, they, all the doctors want to meet you. I hope. I said, of course, honey, it's okay. I'm training. Yeah. I went back up in weight. So I said, it's going to be positive. And sure enough, man, I went there. They actually offered me a contract to work with them. Wow. To help, you know, the patients. So it was like, it was really, really cool, man. Like, like I said, you don't know what's going on in life. Mm -hmm. But in reality, we're only here visitors. Yep. We all know. We're all, you don't know when your yep. time to check out. So the most important thing is to try to pay it forward. Pay it help forward. Others. I like that. And George, that's what I do. Well, that's George, what I do. Uh, you weren't able to get to the Olympia this year. As many people weren't, uh, certainly the fear of COVID and all that, not, probably not the, the best idea. So mm -hmm. wisely, you stayed home uh, to watch it. Yes. Uh, yes. What did you think of the Olympia this year as you were watching it at home, seeing some of the guys you, you've worked with on stage and, and how it unfolded? How did you see it? I tell you what, man, you know, I, I, I one thing you got to give Mr. Mannion and company a total respect, you know, because they know people's watching. They don't care if you deserve to win, you win. Mm -hmm. that, that, you know, that Brandon came in looking amazing. Absolutely. You know what I mean? The mm -hmm. guy looked phenomenal for being Mr. Olympia. He yeah. came in sharper because I talked to Abdullah. I'm like, listen, you got to bring him tight because that's the way they want to look at him. Right. Now, the drama deserved absolutely. The guy is a freak of nature, man. Right, right. I mean, everybody next to him looked like they're in the two twelve. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and I was, I, I'm honestly, I wasn't disappointed with the, with you know Phil. Mm -hmm. I wasn't disappointed. I was just a little sad because yeah. Phil is a champion. In the Phil is yeah. seven years champion. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And and you know, for him to go out like this, I didn't really care much about it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because I thought, man. You know, the way he was talking, I'm like, oh, my God, he's going to he fix his stomach. Absolutely. For him to talk like that. But then when he got out and I saw yeah, his stomach. Like, oh yeah, kind God, of air. You know, so, you know, this is, so, you know, I think the, the most important thing, man, I love it that they call every place where it belongs. Yeah, it seemed like it was fun. very uh, accurate. I mean, uh, Bob yes. was on the stage calling yes. it and I was behind the scenes calling it. And, and that was probably what yes. the takeaway was, is that. We couldn't really argue for anyone to flip-flop places. It seemed like the judges did exactly what we've always hoped that they would do, especially yeah. back in my era, yeah, right. uh, was to get it right. Yeah. So there, were, there weren't any complaints from that standpoint. And, of course, the production was flawless. We're going back there again, George, in October. Amazing. Right? I hope you come Amazing. out. Yeah, now, Dan you mentioned company. you did work with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Uh, is there any other celebrities you've ever worked with along the way that are not bodybuilders? Well, you know, Bob. <laughs> oh, yeah. Celebrity. Bob's an actor. Yeah. At Hollywood. And, you know, it, it through it through like it through like some others people. I really, you know, like I'm not supposed to say, but I did help other people through the wing. You're Dwayne good, yeah, you're good at that. Stuff. You're good at keeping secrets about who you well, actually you work with. You have to, man. You got to you got to get, <laughs> you know, you have to respect those things. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, yeah. I know you're not traveling as much. And, of course, um, you know, your health is most important. You got a daughter. How yeah. old is your daughter now? I have two of them. She's 21 and 16. Yeah. And, and what's that like over there? Now you're married to a doctor. What, what's life in the, in the day of George Farrell look like? You, you know what? Uh, it's life is beautiful, man. You know, just any every day above ground and, and having everything. I mean, honestly, God gave me more than I deserve, man. Yeah. You know, like it, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You know, we went through hell. But we're back, and, and I'm thankful. Well, I got to tell you, one of the, your best works is sitting right here next to me, uh, the voice of professional bodybuilding. Without you, he wouldn't be sitting in this chair. Hey, Trust me. This is very well, true. You know, but, Hang on a second, because we, we got to take a quick commercial break, George. But <laughs> I, I want to get to that, and, of course, your thoughts on this year's Olympia coming up in just a few moments. First, this quick commercial break. You diet down. Train hard and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. 
number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro 10. All right, well, we're Bob back with it. the man himself, George <laughs> Farah, visiting for the first time here at Monday Night Muscle, Sean. Yes. And uh, you said something before the break, which is very true. Uh, without this man, there is no you. There's no me. You uh, don't have the voice. Listen, it could have con continued on with year after year of trial and error. And, you know, I could have been in that category of the Matt Mendenhalls and yeah, the Rory Lito. Hey, it was fun to watch back in those days. Then you turned him pro actually, and ruined it. Actually, oh, I'm going to, you know, maybe I refresh Bob's mind. What's there we go. When I told him, let's do it, yeah. he said, bro, I hang my trunk. I'm, I'm done. Yeah. I said, bro. Why you ask him? Yep. No, no, I, said, I, I why you want to why you want to say that? I, I said, Bob, you're not done. I think I said, it, give me one chance and I'll show you. I think at the best time when we uh, wind up hitting our peak is when we're at the end of our rope, and it was seek or swim for this guy, and uh, it, you, the timing was perfect. Yeah, well, listen, it was, yeah. uh, and, and the cool thing was is we got to experience it together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, listen, uh, training people online is one thing, or training somebody in a different state. George trained people all over the world, so yeah. a lot of it's, you know, doing this and on the phone. But we actually trained together. Yeah. So when you say we trained for the USA, George trained right with me. Mm -hmm. um, listen, he could be coming from work. He didn't care if he had his jeans on mm -hmm. or if he had a, his work stuff or, or, or uh, workout apparel. Didn't make any difference. Here's the time. I'll be there, bro. And, uh, and if he wasn't training, he was spotting me doing stuff, pushing. Well, George, uh, how realistic were you with your Olympia aspirations? I mean, you wound up standing on that stage. Uh, you had to know that you weren't going to be Mr. Olympia, but what, what was your economy mentally? As intelligent as you are, you're at the Olympia. What were you thinking? Well, the, the thing is, you know, honestly, I, I, that's one thing. I don't know what it is, bro. It's, it's a, probably a gift from God. But I always, always believe, like, every dream, you know, like, every dream you dream of and you give it 100%, it will become reality. Okay. You know, like, I'm going to give you a little story. Maybe Bob know it. But when I first came to Rochester, I was only, like, 17, 18 years old. You came from where? I was with, you know, I came from Beirut. Beirut. Well, I came from, you know, I was in Dallas before. Yeah, before, Dallas. But yeah. before that, Beirut, I immigrated to Dallas, Dallas, Chicago, and then Chicago ended up in Rochester right. because friend of mine you know he's a marine he wants to help me we know each other make the story short i was so poor man it's it's not even funny like like if i tell you sit down and tell you a story because the guy that i came to stay with he ended up being a drug dealer i'm like holy crap i could get caught i don't want none of that mm -hmm. so you know sean i had a 500 hundred dollar toyota i used to go park it in the cemetery, I became a friend with the police. I said, listen, man, I got to go to school. This is a true story. Yeah, John, listen to me, man. I joined Samson Gym mm -hmm. when I was like 19, I think. And that's where me and Bob met. That's why we known each other for so long. Mm -hmm. The only reason I went to the gym is because I don't want to stink. I'm working. I need a place to shower. <laughs> yeah. I'm sleeping in my car. Okay. I mean, could you imagine? But, you know, I took it. I'm like, man, this is something I always like. I'm going to, you know, get back. And, like, honestly, everything, man, I put my mind into is, like, you know, I, I, I made it happen. Right. And then what makes me realize all this, that I want to be an Olympian stuff, because when the doctor, after I woke up from my sedative coma, they told me, what saved your life is the muscle. Yeah. You know, if you were a muscular, because remember, I was, I was getting ready. Mm-hmm. I want to do the USA and I get shot. Yeah. I'm like, holy crap. From, you know, being, I want to be 198 or whatever on the stage and I end up being 130 pounds. Well, well slow down, coma, slow you know? down in your story, George. I mean, <laughs> I, what do you just wake up one day and get shot? Like, how does it work? Oh, dude, you know, I was, I was going to an auction with a couple of friends of mine and it happens. We went, I just want to get a bottle of water. I got out. They were gambling, shooting dice or whatever, you know? I said, you guys, let's get out of here. Well, you know, like one thing led to another. I don't know. They want to rob the guy because he's a jeweler. Mm -hmm. And may God bless the soul. He's dead now. You know, he died. You knew him? Uh, no, no. He okay. died actually from net, you know, from heart attack. Or yeah. whatever. I feel bad. So, But he was a good friend of mine. I'm like, oh. Junior, we need to get out of here. And I didn't finish this man. And I see some guy put a gun in my back. And boom. I'm like, oh, he shot you from I mean, the rear. Yes, right in my kidney. The first bullet. I mean, blood just gushed out of my mouth. I was internally bleeding. 
So he shot me three times in the back, and his friend came, shot me in the front. These guys took off, and I was like, I, you know, and I used to carry a gun because I wanted to be a police officer at a time. And I'm like, I'm showing all over the place because I don't want nobody coming near me, you know. Wow. So, but, but, you know, so after that, man, I don't remember anything except waking up. I seen some type of light. It was like really like an emotional thing. And uh, you took four bullets. Me, you know, they, did they pull the bullets out or was it in and out? Were they lodged? Well, this is the problem. They all they were all like hollow points. Yeah. So a lot of the fragments left in there. And that's how 19 years later with me eating the wrong stuff. Yeah. That's how the, you know, the disease manifests. That's how I end up getting cancer in that area where wow. those fragments were. Wow, yeah. man. Yeah. You are very blessed to still be here with us. Because- it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a blessing. Like I said, like when I used to diet, like when Bob, Bob will tell you, man, like when we did the USA, he said, you sure I don't need diuretic? Bob, am I right yeah. or no? I said, bro, listen to me. You don't, that's how people planned out look terrible. I said, mm-hmm. look at me. I never took diuretic. Look at the condition, you know? So make the story short. That's one of the reasons I don't believe a lot of drugs. I don't believe because, you know, I see what the, they told me 20, you know, in, in, in 1997, they told me I'm going to be on dialysis when I get shot. Yeah. And guess what? And one kidney is still holding on. You well, know let what me, I mean? Let me, so, let me ask you something because, I mean, you're still here. Heck, I mean, four bullets, cancer, nothing could stop you. Um, who of your clients is your favorite? Because, listen, Kai Green was there, three first runner-ups in the Olympia. Dexter, the winningest bodybuilder of all time. Um, who who was your all time favorite there? You see, the thing is with me, like when I get anybody on my team, if they give me hundred yeah. percent, they're automatically my favorite. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's not favorite per se. Like I used to always admire, you know, Dexter's body. I love his physique. You know what I mean? And like I told you before, Sean, you were like one of my idols. I used to put, you know, your your pictures because. I love flawless stuff. You know, Bob was like one of the guys that I like because he had small waist, you know, and I'm like, man, if this guy, I used to tell our his friend, if this guy worked with me, oh my God, you guys don't understand what I can do. Mm-hmm. And finally we hooked up. I get actually, he'll tell you, I got like five, six people from our area to turn pro. So yeah. I did help a lot of people. And, and then, you know, when I looked at Kai, and remember, I'm the one people don't know, but I'm the one who lifts up you know Kai's arm when he turned you know a, a pro at the at the team U, Universe, yeah. you know what I mean I was there lifting his arm That's and awesome. we, we hit it off and stuff then he left went with Oscar then he came back and yeah, he started working mm-hmm. and this guy so he's one another guy I love because like he doesn't do anything without asking me yeah. I mean those are the people like that like Dwayne Johnson man one time and this I'm kidding you not he said hey can I have Altoid those are sugar free. <laughs> so I texted him back. I said, I said, uh, I said, Ra- Dwayne. I used to call him Dewey. I said, yeah. Dewey. He's, you know, it's okay every once in a while, but they bother your stomach. Yeah. But this guy, he's not a bodybuilder, but he's getting ready. I think for her to leave at that time, dude. He sent me picture the Altoids in the garbage. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's dedication. But what I'm saying, that's what. But that's what makes you successful. Yeah. You know, like when I was in London, they were telling me like, why is it it's good in America? This. I said, bro, listen. Like right now, I'm leaving here. I'll sit down with 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 the pilot. He's gonna put his you know his his the radar in the cockpit. You know JFK. I said if he move it half a millimeter left or half a millimeter right, I either end up in Canada on different states. They <laughs> said, what do you mean? I said, what I'm trying to tell you is, if you have a target and then you go left and right, you're not gonna end up at that target. And let me but tell you, anything you give hundred percent. It's going to happen. I'll tell you how important that is. Uh, like I said, we kept extensive uh, notes. diary yeah. notes. Uh, everything. Everything I ate, what time I ate. Every, I follow that, and George will tell you that. I follow that not 99%, not mm-hmm. 99.5%, 100%. There yeah. was That's nothing the on there that either wasn't done that was supposed to be, or if I had to eat six ounces, it was six ounces of this. Everything was weighed, right? We got the scale. We got. Yeah. I mean, you talk yeah. about scientific. George, what do we got to do to get the band back together? Because I'm concerned about Bob here. We got to get him back into where he needs to be. You know, honestly, bro, like what I'm trying to teach people now, you know, because there's so much confusion out there. And obviously, pharmaceutical company, they don't care. 
you know, they don't want us, you know, to live perfect, but they don't want us dead. Yeah. So they want us right in between. And they keep, you know, forcing all that food industry to put that garbage out there. And in reality, like instead of people calling it diet and killing themselves, all what you have to do is just don't put anything in your mouth if you know it's not healthy for you wow. and it's not going to do you any good. Yeah, but you're so killing me now, George. I'm, I'm retired and you're, this is what I, what, this is what I got to look forward to? I know, but but what I'm trying to tell you, you know what I'm trying to tell you, bro, is people wonder, like, why 100 years ago we don't have, we, nobody heard of cancer. Yeah. Like, maybe very little, one in a million. Right now, bro, you're talking, it's freaking, we're going to be, we're number 10. So it's what but we eat. Sure, sure enough, the way things are happening, we're going to be probably a leader, not just in obesity. I'm talking, you know, in cancer and Alzheimer and all this, and everybody's worried about corona, but they forget that we lose, like, you know, over a million every year. You know what I'm saying? It's all so, food related. So you really saying. start eating the right stuff, man. That's all the fruit, the way God made it. Like everything. It's so important well, to, George, to put uh, the right things in. You. Glad yeah. you got this knowledge. Uh, congratulations on, on going for your doctorate. If anybody should <laughs> yes. be a doctor, it's you. Yeah, Dr. George. For years, so uh, I know you've put <laughs> that time to, to good use. Are we going to see you on the circuit this year, George? Are you going to venture out a little bit? We're going to see you in some of the absolutely. shows. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, like... Now I'm all vaccinated, so I will probably most likely be at the New York, bro. I nice. have uh, well, we'll Lionel Baiki coming. Oh, uh, Lionel, Lionel Baiki is going to be there. And uh, Asa Obey, you remember? Oh, Asa, yeah, one sure. of yes. it. Dubai. They're both doing the New York Pro. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to see you guys. Well, George, you know? uh, we're looking forward to seeing you in person. Uh, we'll, we'll be catching up with you at the New York. I'm sure we'll both be there. So, uh George, thanks for joining us. It's been a great going down memory lane once My again. My pleasure, you guys. Always, bro. And uh, we'll see you on the circuit. Miss you guys. We'll see you soon. Absolutely. God bless. All right. That's going to wrap it up. For Sugar Sean, I'm Bob Chick. We're out. <laughs>